Hello, my name is Burton Webb. I'm the president here at the University of Pikeville, but more important for today's conversation, I am a person whose background is in medical immunology. Taught in a medical school for 16 years, and I taught undergraduates for another 16, so uh, I'm very well experienced and I have great understanding of what I'm about to present to you, which is the medical reason why you should be vaccinated. Let's start with something fairly simple that I think most of us understand, and that's understanding how the bell curve works. So we'll start with a very simple bell curve that looks something like this. And bell curves go up and they come down just like that. That's a bell curve. You've probably heard that described by a lot of different people in a lot of different contexts. It may not be perfectly shaped. If you're a mathematician, you know that it's shaped just a little bit differently than this, but you get the idea. Somewhere in the middle of the bell curve right here is what we call the average. This, this is the way that the average person responds to whatever question you might be asking them. In this context, what we're looking at is the average person's response to the, the COVID vaccine or to the COVID virus itself. This is the kind of average uh, response that we get. And up on this axis is the number of people in the population. So if you look at the bell curve, what, what we see is that the majority of people on this curve can be found in this area. So if you were to actually mathematically uh, figure out the area under the bell curve right here, you'd have the greatest percentage of humanity in, in that, okay? So if this is the average immune response, uh, over here we've got a great immune response, and over in this direction we have a poor immune response. All right, so those are our, our ranges for the immune response. So we all respond this way to the virus itself or to the vaccine. You know, most people here, some people outstanding, some people not so good. So let's talk about COVID as a disease and then let's talk about the vaccine and, and why that works. And to do it, yeah, I'm a scientist, we draw graphs. So here's another graph. All right, this one's big. And down here on this axis, we're gonna put time. And, and this is time you know, in days on this side of the graph, and then we'll draw it out in weeks or months over here on this side of the graph. And, and on this axis, we're gonna put a couple of things. In orange, like this, we're going to put immune response. And in pink, uh, we're gonna put something just a little bit different. Pink, we're gonna put virus or viral load is what we would typically say uh, as scientists. And then we'll use this green, and I hope you can see the green a little bit differently. And in green, what we're gonna write is symptoms. So hopefully you can see each of those things. And what I'll try to do over this course of time is kind of give you an idea of how each one of those things works. So let's start off with the virus. And we're gonna always begin right here at the origin and call this time zero for our first infection, okay? First infection time zero. So the virus gets into your body and it immediately starts to replicate. And within just a few days, the viral load gets very, very high like this. All right, so let's, let's say this is, this time period takes you out to about five days or so. And you've got a really high viral load. Well, sometime along in, in with the viral load, you'll, you'll have no symptoms at first, and then very quickly as the virus begins to have viral load, you get really bad symptoms, you feel kind of sick, and then this kind of, this plays out differently for different people. Uh, if you're a person here in the median or in the really great immune responses, then your symptoms should come back down over time, and gradually you get back to feeling pretty good. All right, and, and likewise, you should also see that your, the viral load begins to decline over time, but it does stay uh, kind of detectable for a period of time out here. Now, the reason this works the very first time that you see something is that, of course, on day zero, you have no immune response. So you've got nothing going on all the way down here. Your body finally starts to recognize that it's infected with a virus about the time the viral load starts to get up, and you start to make just a tiny little bit of immune response like this, and eventually the immune response kicks in, takes over, and begins to carry out and protect you from disease. So this bottom line, uh, I'm trying to figure out how to label it here, this bottom line is immune response right here. This green line, these are your symptoms, 
And we usually abbreviate that with an X. Those are your symptoms up there. And then this is viral load here, virus. All right, you can see that the immune response is ultimately what's going to drive the, the dissolution of symptoms and also get rid of the viral load from your body. Just a couple of things about the immune response here. Uh, this is one of the characteristics. The immune response here is dominated by a particular kind of antibody called IgM. IgM is really good at clearing virus from circulation, which is why a fairly small peak can clear most of this virus. What you need to know is that each IgM particle has the ability to attach itself to 10 viruses and remove them from circulation. So you can see the size difference here. We're actually getting rid of that virus fairly, fairly quickly. So that immune response is dominated by IgM. But what happens late in the immune response, so out here, and I'm going to put a, a little box out here just so you can um, put it up here. What's happening right here is that your body is shifting away from actively fighting the virus to making memory. All right, so right here, about this time, and it's about time all the symptoms go away and most of the viral load has come back down. Okay, now with COVID, um, we usually don't see a whole lot of uh, secondary infections. Most people, once they stimulate an immune response, it's, it's protective for most folks. But for a lot of diseases, you can get them repeatedly over and over through your life. And so what I want to show you is how this infection looks differently uh, if you've seen it before. I should point out before I move to that, though, that this peak of immunity doesn't happen out here until somewhere between day 7 and day 10. So it takes a long time. And this period, from the point of infection until you've mounted a strong immune response, is something that we call LAG, L-A-G. Yeah, that didn't turn out quite like I wanted it to. So, you know, I'm going to erase that right there. And I'm going to say, this is what we call LAG, L-A-G. That's the LAG phase. Okay, long, five to seven days. Not, not great. Okay, so let's say that um, you've either been vaccinated or this is the second time you've seen the infection. So over here, we're going to put another zero up, but this time it's the second time you've seen something. So it's zero with a, a, a superscript of two. All right, what happens here is this is the second time. So the virus gets in, it starts to replicate, it does its little thing, but very, very quickly now, Instead of waiting for a long period of time, what happens is this. Within about 12 to 24 hours, the immune response goes like this. So this is now your immune response. Correspondingly, the viral load goes like this. This is virus. All right, notice the difference. Here, you've got a large viral load and symptoms. Here, you have very little viral load. And what we're seeing in the data is that the symptoms, if they exist at all, are like this. They lag behind the virus just slightly, but they're significantly lower than what you see before. So what's, what's the difference? Well, the difference really is, is here, because as you shift to memory cells in the primary infection, those memory cells begin to produce high levels of, a, of two other antibody classes. One of them is IgG, which is just found at much greater concentrations in the blood and, and in other places. And the second one is IgA, and IgA is actually found at the mucosal surfaces that COVID infects. So it's found along the sinus of, of your nose, it's found in your respiratory tract, and it helps to protect you. And then the final thing that's made here, which is really important, is memory T cells. And memory T cells will drive this process times, who knows, 10 to 10,000. Depends on your response. Depends on where you are over here in the bell curve. So the response becomes much, much larger the second time you see something than it was the first time you see something. If you were to ever see anything the third time, the antibody response would actually be off the chart. I wouldn't be able to draw it on the same scale with the rest of this because of the way that the body responds. So why are we doing vaccines? Well, the vaccines, the, the Moderna vaccine, the Pfizer vaccine, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, 
I'll mimic this first infection without giving you the symptoms. And you might say, well, I still get body aches or a headache or a fever. Yeah, but those are really mild. Those would be way down here. The symptoms I'm talking about here are respiratory symptoms that are, are really severe and can put you in the hospital. Notice what we have here. Those, those very, very mild symptoms the second time you see something. Okay, so the vaccine mimics this primary response without making you seriously ill and allows your body to stimulate an overwhelmingly large immune response so that should you ever get infected again, you would have already formed a primary immune response with loads of memory cells so that you don't get seriously ill. So now what are we seeing in the news? In the news right now, we're hearing all these reports about what we're calling breakthrough infections or people who've been vaccinated and are still getting sick. Yes, right now the data seem to indicate that's about 0.3% of the people who've been vaccinated. So three out of a thousand people will get symptoms and be able to spread the disease. But the vast majority of them are way down here with really, really mild symptoms. The ones that break through and have serious symptoms or even end up in the hospital, let's come back to the bell curve, would have been the ones over here who weren't able to form a good immune response to the vaccine initially. So for them, it's as if they're back here and they're only seeing this virus for the very first time. I hope that helps you to understand what's taking place with the vaccine and why you would want to be vaccinated. You really want to have a preformed immune response. You don't want to wait the seven to 10 day lag period because that could put you in the hospital. Thanks for listening and I hope that helps.